What's going on Axie fam, Elijah here back with another video and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking about outplays in Axie and show two examples of recent games that I've played. This one is against Tomo who is currently the rank one player in the world. We're gonna to get to explore this really broken Axie although we won't see it uh, effectively win. I'll explain why it is so insanely good and why I had to make a unorthodox decision to end up winning this game. Before before we get started, if you're trying to get really good at Axie, you need to understand what outplays are and how to identify and execute on them. This is what separates professional players from everybody else who's trying to climb up to the top. Guys like Indez, myself, Sebastian, and a lot of these people in the top 100 are always thinking about what the opponent is possibly thinking about, what their options are, how much energy they have, which cards they've played, and piecing together this puzzle. This is what Axie is all about. I go into even more depth on arena fundamentals and in-game execution in my PvP mastery course. Right now I'm doing it for half off since the season just started. So it's a hundred bucks instead of 200. And it's just a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a top thousand player and beyond. I share with you how I've been able to be a top 10 player in multiple arena seasons back to back to back. So there's a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. Let's get into the action. Here we are in round one. I'm gonna break down every play in this game. So I'm not really looking looking to just play my pincer right out of the gate, especially because he has cattail. Ideally, I would like to see him play one of these first. And I don't want to use my aqua cards either because I am saving up for the back door to eliminate this beast from the equation. My team breakdown here, uh, this isn't something I normally do with the immortal plant up front. I just decided to throw it in. There was a lot of back doors that day, so I figured this can actually be a really strong closer in the event that I need it to be. The shrimp is pretty bad at closing. This is obviously tragic if my mech goes down but the general strat here is backdoor you know beasts and birds if I'm feeling like those are running a lot in arena then the shrimp is a good choice and we need some beast damage ourselves to get through the very prevalent tank that we're gonna be facing in the plant class but as I mentioned round one the play is just a pass round two looks like I elected to take a risky pass and hope that I see some cattails bite in some you know shielding up from the plant that's often gonna happen in round two especially because I have a mech. He does elect to play those. So this is sort of what I was hoping for. And I actually would have survived this, I believe, and then potentially draw a bone sail or a zigzag and have some brick wall potential for good value in the next round. As it turns out, he goes with this and we get the very unfortunate slap double crit to the face. Oh my God, rip to that plant. And now my Aqua even starts to take a little bit of damage. So we're not off to such a hot start here, that is for sure. Heading into round three, I decide to try to kill this plant efficiently and hold on to one mech card. I'm gonna need as many mech cards for this midliner dusk as possible. I know that I still have plenty of energy and cards next round to kill the beast by conserving these on my Aqua. We eliminate the plant, discard a card, and now there's all the Aqua cards. We can snap off his backliner which we do. Now, he plays a lot of high shield cards on his midliner here, which looks sort of wasteful, but in his mind, I'm assuming he's just thinking, I don't have a lot of damage at this midline, and I just need to try to get rid of the aqua and head into a 1v1. Okay, so now in round five, you can see that my options are running kind of thin at this point. I only have two beast cards. I need way more than that to deal with this thing. The aqua cards are pretty useless. They're not gonna do a lot of damage, and he has so much shield. Looks like the best play for me is to pass. He does enough to kill off my Aqua, a bit of an overkill as he's now running pretty dry on cards himself. Now I'm surely keeping track of his cards. The card counter in the top right is telling me in each round um, how many he's ending up with after he makes his moves. So in this case, the card reader in the upper right hand corner would be saying two right now, telling me he has two cards remaining. I can add three to that in the following round and know he's at five, which isn't an insane amount of options, especially considering I'm seeing him play his highest shield cards here. And he also has Nemo as an option of a card to be holding in his hand and to be redrawing. So I'm just paying attention to those things as I approach the 1v1. You might be thinking, 
This is a great one verse one for us. It's actually not. There's no good 1v1 versus this Dusk because he's got the potential to nullify an insane amount of damage, draw cards infinitely, heal up, and have infinite energy all in one Axie. So the thing that's most like broken about this build that I hope the devs fix is when you play Bone Sail and Bumpy, Bumpy recovers 20 shield like per turn, and by that it means like per card played. So let's say this thing loses all of its shield and then I'm playing like three more mech cards. Each time it's gonna be recovering 20 shield. If he played this with Bone Sail, every time he gets that 20 shield back and then it breaks again, he keeps getting cards. Totally insane uh, cycle there. And as I mentioned, heals and energy on top to keep it going. And the last thing is, and this is where the outplay comes into effect, is you might be thinking in this spot, okay, five energy, we're a mech, we do extra damage to Dusks, let's just go ham with all three high damage range cards, plus the Arco, try to get the kill, right? No, 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 that would not actually kill this Axie. You have to remember as well, another interesting mechanic that I don't know is really like the, the best thing for the game is that this card stacks. So when he plays two Bumpies or Overgrown Keratins, he's actually recovering 40 shield per turn. So every attack I do does 40 less damage. If I play all four of these cards and get down to one energy and he manages to reduce a bunch of damage this round and potentially, you know, heal up, right? I don't know how many zigzags exactly he has. If it's two zigzags, a bone sail and a bumpy, and he heals and regenerates tons of shield and gets infinite cards, I'm really not in a good position in this 1v1. So it's a little uncomfortable because I have all these choices and I don't wanna die. But when I look at the weakness of this build, it is the fact that he does not have that much energy and reptile cards are gonna do less damage to beasts as well. So I can actually safely pass. I know I'm not gonna die. I do play one Arco. Okay, so I take not a lot of damage here. He is wasting these cards. He would have gotten back uh, like three or four cards had I attacked into him. He actually would have gotten back four cards here if I would have gone for it. And as I mentioned, I know I wouldn't have killed him because of how much uh, Bumpy takes away damage. Okay, but now we've got tons of energy, tons of cards, and I know that I just allowed him to deplete himself without getting the card bonuses. And if I'm paying attention to the card counter, it would have said one after he made all those moves last round, which means he redraws three. He only has four cards. Um, so yeah, the obvious choice here is to go ham. And even though I'm weak, I can put up 170 shield myself here. I decide to go high shield over damage as surviving, I think, is the priority. I know if I get another four card wave off next round, I'm going to win. So I don't need to kill. I just need to live. And we get very close to taking him out. We depleted him and, he, you know, he was forced to draw another Nemo. So his options were bad there. And that was all because of our decision not to attack into him the round before. And now we go super damage and go ahead and finish this game off and get the kill. Okay, so in this next game, I'm up against a Dusk Bird combination. He's got his beast and bug damage to help get through the tank. Incisor for some slow manipulation, decent shield and damage as well. And he's got a backdoor bird here with post bite to potentially snipe off some axes with the egg transfer and a very beefy tank up front. Okay, round one. I actually don't play Cattail here, which I usually lean towards playing it against anything that has beast and bug damage. It's a bit of a toss up these days. People are catching on, they're trying to wait for you to play a cattail so it's a bit of a guessing game if it's a build that has a lot of bug damage and discards i always play around one because they're usually pressing buttons very quickly to limit my options so that can offset that a little anyway here i don't do it which i end up regretting because i would have drawn two cards so we start taking a beating like right away we get crit again so this will be another one of those of like how we can fight back and pull it off we miss the steal which is extra sad as well we do a little bit of damage i now play the cattail but it's it's a waste. He steals an energy. The reason I pass round two here is because I haven't seen any of the really high shield cards from his plant, and that's typical that they get played this round at least one, sometimes two. 
So I am trying to be patient. I know I'm behind at this point, so I need to gamble a little bit. He takes an energy, still not great for us here. Let's see what I decide to do now. Uh, it looks like I go for the kill on his plant with a Risky Beast and an Arco. He decides to keep pushing the pace. We don't get the kill, so we're still very sad about our position, and he's gonna actually get off a Cactus and a hot soon, almost killing our midliner. Oh boy, ouch. Okay, we've got three energy in this round. He has two. Now, bear in mind, I have not seen an eggshell yet. That's one of the cards I'm trying to pay attention to. For him, this has the most outplay potential. This is the one he gets to draw the opponent away with and manipulate my aquas into doing a huge attack on like an already weak bird that has played post fight instead of a four card combination into his dusk. Eggshell is probably my favorite card in the game or at least one of them because it's so satisfying to pull that that card off and change the course of the game. So I gotta be very careful here. He finishes off my midliner. I finally kill his plant. And now we're in a 2v1, both of his axes being in good shape. Now the one good thing is that he's played a lot of cards. You know, his options shouldn't be phenomenal by any means. But I also know that I have a full clip and four energy. If he's a solid player, he should be paying attention to that. So it seems like the type of round where I would naturally need to unleash a clip into his dusk, hopefully kill it, speed up, so on and so forth. Or at least that's what a lot of players are gonna try to do here. So I'm reading into all that, thinking that he's probably thinking that I'm going to be putting my foot on the gas. If I spend all of my energy to attack into his bird and have two going into the 1v1 versus this dusk, I'm gonna be completely toast. So adding all that up, I actually decide to only play two cards. I go with both speed ups here in the Koi's just in case he somehow goes with like egg double incisor. I wanna make sure I'm going first in the next round. And we can see how this really in a game that was terrible for me up until this point, I might just be able to turn it around. So I speed up twice, his bird goes into last stand, which actually is nice. It splits up his draw a little bit so he doesn't get three cards on the dusk. And I know I'm gonna go first, I've got the mother of combinations here for plants and dusks, which is risky risky. So risky fish and risky beast. And even with however much shield this is, I believe it's like one, 110. We'll see that 104 damage. I think this is 179, no joke. And just enough here, he's got 173. We managed to turn the tables, put him into last stand and get the victory in this game. So these are just a couple examples of things that you can start to think about as you grow as a player. You need to identify what cards provide the biggest win condition for yourself and your opponent and know how to keep track of them and make timely adjustments. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. It's at Elijah underscore MT8. And leave a comment. Let me know if you wanna see more of this style of video. I think I'm gonna start doing it a little more consistently as this part of Axie is insanely important. In my opinion, it's more important than like just thinking you can find the best team and win a bunch of games. You really need to know how to play and outsmart your opponent. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.